Yeah, but I want to introduce right now, I've got Tom Young and John Musto with us. They are the owners and co-owners of Drive Wines out of Sonoma. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you coming by, man. Thanks for having us on. So I'm, I've set up in the booth right next to you guys and I didn't, we came in because of the heat. So we're in a really beautiful air conditioned studio right now, which is really nice. Um, but tell us a little bit about, um, you know, you guys' background. I know you both have a varied background. How did you partner up and, and before you tell us how you partnered up though, what was your background basically in business? So my, my work that I did for many years was in the printing industry. And I got out of that in 2013 and bought a piece of property in Pengrove and had a big side yard, didn't know what to do with it. So I decided I was going to put in a vineyard. Nice. Had no idea what I was doing. Hmm. So I bought a book. And I went by the book and I put the vineyard in. And then as time went on, I realized I didn't know what I was doing with the vineyard. (laughs) What kind of grapes, just out of curiosity? Okay. Syrah. So what I did was I decided I'd take a class at Santa Rosa JC right. to try to learn a little bit. So I took the first class. So you're you're goner now because you're totally sucked in, well, right? Yeah, I kind of got the <laughs> wine bug at this right. point. Yeah, yeah. So I took a class. I liked it. Decided I needed to learn a little bit more. So I signed up for another class. And I had this guy sitting next to me sitting behind me in that class. Okay. And that's how we met. So like room 222. So John, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your background, John. Absolutely. So thanks, Mike. And thanks, Tom. Um, Yeah, I originally grew up in the East Coast. I grew up in Connecticut and uh, went to school in Rhode Island and worked in Boston for a bit um, in the financial industry. Realized it wasn't exactly for me. Right. Uh, Moved to Europe for a bit and kind of fell in love with wine out there. So coming back to the States, knew that I had to be in California Fell in love with Sonoma County and, uh, yeah, caught the bug there and, and took it with me here. And, and you guys actually literally met in winemaking class. Exactly. How cool is more, that? More that is that. so cool. Well, a couple of things. One, I really love this area as well. I've been, I, I'm a California native and I grew up all up and down the state, mostly Northern California. And I lived in Marin and I just love this region. But something that you said, John, really sort of is a lot about what the show is about. We, encourage people to never give up on their dream you know you might start off as one career you're in finance you're in printing um, that doesn't mean that's the road you're on for the rest of your life and a lot of folks I think I don't know if they're just afraid to, to sort of step out of bounds every once in a while or they just don't have the confidence but one of the things that our listeners are interested in is how to how do you do the transition how do you commit how do you sort of step off the edge, so to speak. And it does take a little bit of guts, and I guess there's a little bit of risk involved. But how was the process from sort of classmates to what was the first sort of talk about, let's do this for a business? I can take this one. Um, So after meeting in class, we both decided that, well, John actually had already made a round of wine in 2014, and he bought grapes from a gentleman out in Fulton, Pete Lewis. And so... After meeting John in class, we decided that we would make wine together. So we went back out to Pete Lewis's place in Fulton, and we bought, I don't remember, 500 pounds or something like that. Right. And took him back to my place in Pengrove and made... A barrel, maybe? No, not even that. I think we had six carboys, like 30 gallons. Okay. So, and it, it came out okay. And then the next year, we wanted to buy grapes from Pete again. So we went out there and discussed it with him and and he let us know that it was too hard for him to take care of his vineyard anymore and he wanted to make a deal with us wow so the deal was how many acres it's very small it's yeah. only 172 plants oh, okay so i'm like a third of an acre sure sure so anyway the deal was if we took care of the vineyard which we've been taking classes on you know viticulture classes for the last couple of years so we kind of knew what we were doing right but if we took care of his vineyard then we would get the grapes for free. Nice. And then he also asked us if we'd like to buy his winemaking equipment in his six-car vintage auto garage and make our wine there. So it was kind of a sweet deal. I mean, that is so cool how things, you know, this is the other part of what your guys' story really illustrates is the fact that and this is how life really works. You guys mm-hmm. are not some, you know, famous guys. This is just what you did. When your intention is there, it, it actually starts opening up doors that sort of lead you down the road that you're supposed to be going right. down anyway. Right. 
<clears throat> so um, how do you like going out, uh, John, and uh, clipping vines and taking care of an old vineyard? Uh, it seemed like it was kind of like probably yours at the time, right? felt pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it was an incredible feeling. And to be honest, part of the reason that we really wanted to take it on in that direction was we, we wanted to learn every aspect of this industry. Smart, yeah. So for us to be in class and supplementing our class learnings with our own vineyard that we could work with. Sort of an internship in a way. It was. Yeah, nice. It was, and it was, you know, our ability to do trial and error. And, and I think, you know, to, to be philosophical as you, you ask how to make that leap, for us it's been kind of a snowball effect, you know. An ounce of, of courage here goes a long way and you just kind of get things started and being a partnership, we, we push each other for more and more, and right. we give each other kind of the courage to go out there and, and put it all on the line. Well, that makes sense. I mean, that does help to have a little bit of support for sure. And what was the variety? Was that a Syrah as well, that vineyard? No, that's Zinfandel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so you learned you learned about a, a whole season or more than one season, <clears throat> excuse me, in a vineyard. You learned about sort of uh, – Canopy management yes. and irrigation and all those types of things. Yeah, we learned pretty much anything that you could learn. You know, running a vineyard by yourself, we made mistakes. You know, we sure. over watered, we over pruned, we, you know, right. but we learned from it. Right. So, and how long ago is that? How long have you been doing this now? We did our first vintage was 2015. So we did 15, 16, 17, 18, and we're doing it again this year. Nice. We're still taking care of that vineyard out there. Well, you know, it's so. Sp- amazing that you guys are here and the the only reason that you're here is because you guys are gold medal winners and so what i d- haven't got to go and try your wine unfortunately i'm going to do it right after we're done here but what and uh, you should have brought some with you <clears throat> oh look Which at that it's just not open but uh we'll get to some of the open stuff here in a bit um so as i'm looking at it so there it is that, that answers my question rosé of zinfandel from dry creek valley so it's so beautifully pale um how do you, how do you, I mean, we all, a lot of people think of, say, white Zinfandel instead of rosé of Zinfandel. Wasn't white Zinfandel more of sort of a marketing term, kind of like you'd say white Chablis or Burgundy wine back in the 70s and 80s? Yeah, I mean, white Zinfandel, there's a whole story behind white Zinfandel and, it, and it's kind of coming of age and I can't really speak to that fully, but um, well, I mean, I think the average consumer might sure. think uh, yeah, we don't yeah. need the history of white zin, but I mean, rosé of zin or white zin as a consumer, how are they differentiating that? Yeah, no, I think that's our job. This is a hand sell. This is fifty six <coughs> cases of this wine that we made, so we're selling this to people, you know, face to face and having the opportunity Perfect. to speak to that yeah. and kind of differentiate it. And for us, it's fun. I mean, to have that expectation of somebody picking up this wine and expecting kind of a big, sweet white zin. Right. And then they try ours, which is in that vingri style. It's fermented to dryness, and it's mm-hmm. dry, and it's crisp, and it's refreshing. We see this element of surprise and, and delight in, in their yeah. face, and that's kind of very rewarding. We've actually seen that quite a bit today, and it's been a lot of fun. I bet. I mean, because it's sort of, it's sort of, I think, where the rosé journey for the average person sort of begins. If you you need somebody to sort of have a frame of reference and you say... I, you know, at my wine tastings, I'll often bring a rosé, and I'll say, I'd like you to try this rosé. And they'll see the pink, and they'll go, no, 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 you know, immediately. And it's sort of like, okay, that's a hurdle that you guys obviously have to overcome. And everyone out here, frankly, has. But um, but as you say, the once they've tasted it, then game over, because now they get it. It's sort of like the light goes on. We just need to get more people to try rosés. What, so is rosé your own, is this your only wine that you make or do you guys make a number of different wines or? So the first wine we made was in 2017. It was a red Zinfandel. So it's a single vineyard Zinfandel from an old vine Zin, uh, Zinfandel vineyard out here in Dry Creek. That okay. was 2017 and we bottled that in March. Mm-hmm. So this being the 2018, the idea was to have a complement to that Zinfandel. Nice. So we came to market with those two products. So we currently have a Zinfandel and a rosé. And this year we're going to be expanding to include a cool climate Syrah that we're super excited about. Okay. Kind of going back to Tom's roots and how he got into this with the Syrah vineyard at home. Kind of now we've made a full Syrah circle. Vineyard. Good deal. So Tom, now uh, as far as your uh, experience with wine over the years, as far as just an enjoyer of wine, what? I mean, obviously you got interested in making wine, but what are the types of wines that you you sort of like gravitated to before you were a winemaker? And do you still aim in that direction or have you has your mind been so expanded that you're now just want to try a bunch of different things yeah it's been expanded quite a bit but i'm still pretty much a zen guy okay and syrahs which is one of the reasons why we're going to try a syrah this year nice so, i mean that's the vineyard that i have at my place so yeah just just 
you know, trying different zins and, and different Syrahs is really... Big what, California Reds, in yeah, other words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not much of a white guy. And are you um, sourcing from, uh, are you starting to find a lot of the winemakers that I've had on earlier, including Jeff Runquist? I mean, he's got five acres of vines, but the guy makes just a lot of wine. Uh, clearly, he knows, he, ha- he has producers that he really likes, and he sources grapes from specific regions, including even down in Southern California. Is that your vision of the future as you go forward? Are you guys going to start sourcing grapes, or are you just trying to acquire local stuff? Well, we're already doing that. So I think we need to back it up just a hair as far as the vineyard in Fulton. Uh-huh. Those, that vineyard that we take care of out there, that is wine that John and I make in, in that six-car garage okay. in Fulton. So this wine that you're looking at here, this rosé and the Zin and the Syrah, we source those grapes. Okay. So for this rosé, we source the grapes from Comstock Vineyard on Dry Creek Road. Mm -hmm. And then for our 17 Zin that we bottled in March, that comes from Puccioni Vineyards off of Mill Creek Road. Okay. So, yeah. And then, we're already sourcing. And then uh, one of the things that we did this morning, we had a little event here with uh, the panels. There was Rick... Motion, Jeff Runquist and Rick Davis, and we tried three rosés, and then they were each paired. Uh, Mark came in and made some amazing charcuterie for us. Um, food is a big part of wine. Where, where you guys sit with regards to how how do you sort of talk to your consumer about this goes great with this, this goes great with that? What is your own philosophy on say food and pairing and the versatility? Uh, that you get out of a nice rosé like this. Yeah, I mean, for for me, that's the reason I like wine in general as much as I do, is its ability to pair with food. So for us, with the rosé, I think one thing that we really target in on is the fact that we, when we were coming up to harvest, we were targeting specific pH levels. So we were looking at acid levels more than we were looking at sugar levels because we wanted to have that acid-driven, crisp Food-friendly wine, yeah. And for us, yeah, that ends up being why it pairs so well with seafood or cheeses or kind of light summer salads. Right. Yeah, I think that's a really, you know, integral part of, of Very what cool. We're doing. Well, listen, I uh wanted to give you guys an opportunity to sort of maybe put out another highlight of something that you wanted to talk about or else at least let people know as we wrap things up. How do people find your wines? I mean, if you're making such small batches, how do we get a hold of some of your stuff? Yeah, so being a new brand, I mean, this this is kind of we just is this your debut last, here? Kind this of? is essentially a public debut for us. Nice. Yeah. So family and friends have been very supportive of us as we've gotten kind of the start and getting that feedback, and now we're coming out to market here. But we've had a website set up, so you can find us at drivewines.com. Drive Wines, D-R-I-V-E, drivewines.com, yep. So that's kind of the best place to start us now. Sign up for our email list. Those are the first people that are getting access to our wines. You know, like we've talked about, 56 cases here and 150 cases of the Zin, so... It's going to go pretty quick, and, and the people who are on our email list are the ones that are going to get first access well, that's, to our well I Well, I know where you guys have your booth. I'm going to go over there and grab a couple of bottles right now. I encourage you guys out there that are listening to uh, check these guys out. This is something that I'm sure you're going to be back here next year, and uh, you're probably going to be part of a lot of the other wine festivals that are going on around here. So best of luck to you guys. It's great to meet new winemakers, and you seem like a great partnership. So, Tom, John, thank you so much for joining us, man. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. You bet. Well, listen, check these guys out. It's drivewines.com, and uh, we'll be right back. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to be right back on the other side. So stick around. I'm Mike Rayford. You're listening to In Search of the Good Life Show. We'll be right back. Good Life Show. We'll be right back. Good Life Show. We'll be 